Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your friend Nay Borleyhood Oxhorn and I'm here today with a video all about sludge. That's right, sludge. Who's made a video about sludge? I don't know of any videos about sludge. But sludge is a new chem food drink? I don't even know. That came in Far Harbor. Oh man, and I am getting torn up by Mirelurks. I have the wrong gun equipped. Anyway, uh... Sludge is a new consumable aid item that came with Far Harbor that gives you some unique abilities and stats. Uh, it's different from alcohol, it's different from chems, and it's different from food. It stacks on top of all of those, so it has the potential to be really useful. We're going to go through everything. I'm going to show you how to open up the sludge menu in your chem station so that you can craft it, where to get the materials, and I'll show you what each and every new sludge does for your character. The first thing you need to do is get the Recipe Roundup Islanders Almanac Magazine in Far Harbor. To find it, go to the National Park Visitor Center. Run past all the booby traps, enter the building and go to the right. You're gonna find a sort of dilapidated gift shop. On the counter, underneath some burnt magazines, you will find the Recipe Roundup Islanders Almanac. This unlocks all of the sludge-based recipes in the game, and you can now craft them at any chemistry station. Each sludge recipe has unique requirements, but they all require condensed fog. This one's a little tricky because it's right in your face and it's so obvious, but you can actually find condensed fog from the fog condensers that are inside every single settlement in Far Harbor. Just walk up to the fog condenser, look inside the little jug, and you can loot some condensed fog from there. If you plan on making a lot of sludge, make sure to loot as much condensed fog as often as you can so that you always have some in stock. When you get to your chemistry station, you're going to notice a new section called sludge. Open it up and first on the list is going to be the agile sludge pack. Action point regeneration increases with your current radiation level for 12 minutes. That's a common theme with all of the different sludges is 12 minutes. They also all require harmed radiation in some way. To craft the Agile Sludge Pack, you need one condensed fog, one dirty water, two fertilizer, and one stim pack. This is what it looks like. Looks like a uh, reskinned stim pack, only it's pretty filthy looking. Not sure I'd be keen on injecting that in my blood, especially since it's made of fertilizer. Ugh. Now the best way to test this is to use the item before you get irradiated, see what the effect is, and then irradiate yourself. To irradiate ourselves, we're going to be using the salvaged Assaultron head from Automatron. To use this gun, you reload it and then fire it, and what it does is it irradiates the user. So this is a great way to control the amount of radiation that we get. Alright, so the first item we want to try is the Agile Sludge Pack. Action point regeneration is increased for 12 minutes. So, before we do anything, let's make sure that we are radiation free using a Radaway and a Stim Pack. Perfect. Now, let's use the Agile Sludge Pack. Gave us 148 rads. And let's try and see what our uh, AP regeneration is like. Okay, it's slowly ticking up there. Pretty cool. Now let's fully irradiate ourselves. Looks like we get 50 rads a pop. So it's going to take me a while. Hold on. Okay, we're fully irradiated to the point that we're seeing blurry. I've got one hit left from this Assaultron head, and I'm dead. Uh, now let's check out our AP regeneration. Alright, that's significantly faster in the lower right-hand corner. Let's do that again. Wow, it almost fills itself completely up in four or five seconds. All right, pretty cool. Let's try the others. 
Next up is the Durable Sludge Pack. This increases damage resistance with your current radiation level for 12 minutes. One condensed fog, one dirty water, two fiberglass, weird, and one stim pack. And this is what it looks like. This one also looks like a stim pack. Again, pretty creepy. Who wants to put fiberglass in their bloodstream? <laughs> Damage resistance is increased with your current radiation level. Okay, so my damage resistance is at 442. Remember that number, 442. Let's use the item. And I'm still at 442. Time to get irradiated. And there we are, fully irradiated. Let's take a look at our damage resistance. 542. So we went up 100 points of damage resistance by using this. Now, we only have 16 HP left, so how useful this would be, uh, you know, maybe if you're completely out of stim packs, there's no way to heal your life, you don't have any rad away, and you're in a thick fight, you could pop one of these to up your damage resistance for a brief period of time. I don't know, it's going to be situational, really. Alright, let's try the next one. Next up is the Resilient Sludge Cocktail. And uh, notice that it's got a different image than the Sludge Pack. Looks kind of like a Wears Brew. And this is also different because instead of uh, scaling to your rad level, it actually removes your rad resist. So it removes 150 of your rad resist and gives you plus 75 max health for 12 minutes. It costs one blood bug meat, one condensed fog, and one rad X. Let's see what it looks like. And yeah, it looks like a, uh, a wares brew or some tree sap. Looks a little less yellow than uh, Where's Brew. And looks pretty doggone glossy as well. Not bad, not bad. Negative 150 rad resist and plus 75 max health for 12 minutes. Okay, looks like this one is not dependent upon your rad level. But it means that our rad resist is much lower. So just out of curiosity, let's see what one of these shots will do to me. Remember we did 49 rad damage with each shot and it pops up to 50 okay so honestly the negative rad resist is not that big of a deal the additional max hp is much more interesting so that one is pretty worth it and finally we get the strong sludge cocktail this one has a lot, a lot of potential in my mind strength increases with your current radiation level for 12 whole minutes. It costs two blight, one condensed fog, and one dirty water. Blight is pretty easy to find in Far Harbor, but costing two blight per cocktail, that's, that's a whole lot of blight you're gonna have to go collect. Let's see what it looks like. And it looks like a flask, just like the resilient slug, uh, sludge cocktail. Pretty nifty. Strength increases with your current radiation level for 12 minutes. All right, let's start by taking a look at our strength, which is 12. So let's take the strong sludge cocktail. It gives us 148 rads. Let's see. We're still at 12. So let's rad ourselves up. And I think that's about as far as I should go. One more hit from this and I'll die. But let's take a look at our strength. Plus 15. Okay, so I got three points of strength by fully irradiating myself. That's plus 30 carry capacity. And that's going to stack on top of the grilled rad stag and the grilled gazelle to further complement any uh, carrying capacity strategy of yours. So, uh, there you go. Those are all the sludges. They're a pretty interesting item. Uh, it's really situational, you know? Bethesda made this to 
work in Far Harbor. And if you're on a survival build where resources are slim and you're trying to get through Far Harbor, then I could see some, some of these sledges being useful. But really, um, your best bet is to carry the Assaultron, the, the salvaged Assaultron head with you so that you can better control the radiation exposure that you get. I suppose you could always hop in some water or start uh, taking some uh, irradiated food uh, as another way to up your radiation to take best advantage of these. Really, the best one, the one that I could see myself using, is the Strong Sludge Cocktail. All I gotta do is amp up my radiation, drink some water, use the salvaged Assaultron head, or do something to get my radiation exposure pretty bad. And then if I'm not feeling like I'm in danger, boom, that's plus 30 carry capacity. It's gonna help me go on a scrap run when I need more scrap for my settlement build. So there you go. Uh, that's I love doing little experiments like these because uh, they answer questions that I've always had, that I'm sure many of you had, and they give me more tools in my tool set for playing this game, for making the most out of this game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like this video. I do this full time now, so uh, please subscribe for more Fallout 4 videos. I make a new video every day, and sometimes I make two a day. Please let me know in the comments section if you like content like this, and if you have any other ideas for content, let me know. I do read the comments, and I'm, I respond to the best ones. So if you've got an idea for a piece of content that you would like to see, ask away, and we'll see if I can do it for you. Thank you so much for subscribing, and I'll see you all very, very soon.